back in Beacon Hill today. I'm excited to show you what the guy's been working on uh, and framing this place out. But came up with a stellar detail for this arch top in the entryway. I'm gonna walk you through uh, that, but how we accomplished it uh, with all of the nuances with, well, stick around, you'll see. So this is what I was talking about, guys. So let me walk you through the, the story here. Let me back up, might be helpful. So common hall, walking into this little tight entry. See all our job site signage, COVID. But essentially we had this entryway, super tight, uh, and we found some space above the ceiling. I'll get to that in a second. And brick wall, uh, you can't see it now, brick wall. This used to be the outside face. You can actually see an old window outside face of the building. Found some brick up here that was in poor shape. So we had our mason come in and put, install a new steel lintel up there. There's the brick wall right there. So we have this funky, essentially flat wall, which is parallel with everything in, in this space. Uh, and then we have this wall that's perpendicular, where we get this weird angled opening. And this wall goes straight down, catches the bathroom, goes into the kitchen. So we can't case that side. And then this side, we can't really case it because it wraps around, you can kind of see, comes out, flattens out and goes straight into there. So it's super funky. Uh, and on the drawing or in the, not even drawing, but in discussion, we were just gonna go up and kind of make a header there out of plaster. And I just didn't like that. And, and I'll explain why is it just was gonna feel cold and not thoughtful and, and just not intentional really. So when we found out that we could push that ceiling up, it was awesome. But they started talking about adding crown molding up here and it would come across and then angle and it's just this old Beacon Hill brownstone and all of these rooms are always square and the crown molding isn't gonna ever have that kind of funky angle, especially in a space like this, they would make it square. So we started talking about essentially these are from archways and ceilings. Wes, uh, you guys know him on Instagram, but essentially sell these th these uh, radius kits. You can actually see it's a 14 inch radius cove ceiling. Uh, and the thought here is that it's a small space. And if we radius that ceiling and run that paint color all the way up and then back down as I trip over my patio chair, uh, that's gonna make this space feel a lot larger. Just basically wipe this out and this has that cushion effect or cloud effect. So you don't have this any, any, any hard lines up there. You're not getting distracted by it visually. Um, a lot of thought went into it and it's probably something you're like, well, you're never really gonna notice it. But I would argue that, especially when we have the ceiling, the ceiling fixture that hangs down right here, you know, the light is gonna essentially shine and shine up the ceiling and back down and just make this really bright and light feeling, especially with no hard angles. So that's why we did that. Let me catch my breath for a second, run up the stairs. Uh, same thing on this arch. And you can see, I'm gonna do my best explaining this, because I know you guys hate when I don't explain things right. Uh, this arch comes up and gets cut off, but it, it, it goes down to zero on this side. On the opposite side, this is where you're gonna see it the most. Uh, because you're standing in the space. Um, and right now it's a little tough to see because it's just plywood, but it goes from zero up and then back down. I believe it's roughly 42 inches. So you have a perfect, you know, zero up to your, your quadrant and back down to zero, perfect arch there. Like I said, you have this weird angle that comes in. So we wanted to essentially treat this as this was an archway, an existing archway. This will be all plastered and that this wall ended up having to come in and kind of impede that. And that's exactly what you have is, you have this archway, which typically would continue down, but instead this wall, hey, that bathroom had to grow and impact that archway. So that's exactly what's happening here. Once it's plastered, we'll actually snap a line from here down and we'll have a nice crisp line where that, that arch comes and intersects this flat wall all the way down. On the other side, same thing. 
you have this basically if you can kind of think of this as a, a, a volume or a, a shape that was moving in this direction and just kind of in, impacted the bottom of the arch because normally you'd say well why not just flatten it from here to here it just doesn't work so same thing we'll go from zero snap a line snap a line down and when this is all plastered it will look like this volume has kind of interrupted that arched archway a little complex uh definitely complex in thinking of it. it it took a little bit to figure this out and make it all work uh, there's a lot of points that have to line up like this outside corner has to hit there and then has to actually hit the center of that and you can see those kind of run along uh wes is actually making us two new pieces for that inside corner uh, but that line has to be continuous straight up into that radius ceiling so it's really important to get that stuff lined up so it looks intentional but the, the, the psychology behind this is that when you walk in, nice arch top doorway, you're not kind of looking at a, a flat ceiling here and you're drawn into the space. Uh, and same thing when you turn around, when you look at that, it's more inviting looking than just a, a kind of capped off header there. So we'll probably have to spruce up that door. Um, we'll come back to that at a later point. But what else is going on? Brian from Powerhouse is here. He's working on electrical rough. Uh, did we get inspection today? Yes. Nice, rough inspection, passed? All good. Woo, and I think we got our plumbing inspection as well. So the boys at Darb have gotten all our plumbing. Uh, reminder, this is in a brownstone multifamily building here in Beacon Hill. So everything is cast and copper. Uh, with the exception, obviously, you can switch to PVC within the unit uh, down to our drains. So I don't want anyone correcting us there. Um, so I'm standing in the bathroom. We got our temporary toilet. That, uh, the in-wall unit is permanent, but this bowl will get swapped at the end of the job when we're done. That way we're not running down to, uh, to a, a local donkeys. Um, you can see this back here. Uh, we've talked about this in a previous episode, but all the plumbing actually got rerouted back and then up uh, to gain us this bench within our shower. It's a small unit, so any square inch really uh, is super helpful. And check this out. This is prepped for our linear drain. Uh, so you'll have a zero entry shower here. It'll actually ramp up. So water will actually uh, divert back towards the door. Not ideal, but in this situation, we didn't have another option and we wanted that Krebless entry. So that's what we're doing. And it's really important to do a full linear drain all the way wall to wall. We'll actually do the tiled one. So you have essentially an eighth inch slot all the way around. So when water runs back, uh, it has to hit that drain and anything that might make it past will hit the, the glass door and the squeegee and kind of go back in. But check this out. The guy's actually marked it on the ground. You can see all the, the funky plumbing going on. So you can see that drain goes around and it ties back to that cast. So some funky work going on. Make it all, make it all work, but a lot of forethought and a lot of, a lot of thinking has to go into this to make this work, especially with curbless and making sure that that drain is exactly the right width, et cetera, et cetera. This will be the primary suite or primary bedroom. Uh, guys got some of the interior trim installed so the shutter guys could come out and template for their future shutters. This is a more traditional space uh, with some mo modern amenities. This will be kind of a work from home office. So you get this pocket door here, kit from HD pocket doors, Got our build clean set up. This way you can take it out, block it up, run it when needed. And then a set of French doors that lead into our living room space. Uh, old fireplace came out that's going to go electric. They're not interested in going gas uh, nor using the wood. And we get some electrical running tight to our brick wall. You can see our old plaster adhered right to our, our brick. So everything's in ENT. And going down to future fireplace, sconce. TV, sconce, uh, everything in that, those locations. Same thing on the exterior walls. You know, we want to make sure that this stuff is in a conduit so it's protected. Uh, it can't just be floating in that uh, non-cavity. Essentially, that's going to be essentially plastered right over. We built the ceiling down because it's a terracotta ceiling. Terracotta tiles, essentially almost like a pre, almost like a cast in place concrete slab but with terracotta and then plastered right on top. Uh, and this gives us the space for our future recessed lighting. 
So this door right here, this door where the ladder is, and actually another one I didn't mention um, in here, this door are all actually gonna be plastered in Easy Jam doors. Uh, going along with the theme of this room, making it really simple. Uh, we want a coat closet, but we want this room to be just this big cloud uh, so it feels nice and light. So we're gonna do the plastered in doors. And same thing here because we got nice cased opening, nice cased, or case door, case door. And then this is just gonna be too much. So we figured let's just blend it in and make it look invisible. Bathroom will be traditional door. And then Ken's actually working on um, revised shop drawings for this kitchen. So it's gonna be a pretty cool kitchen actually. The first time I've ever done below counter refrigeration and freezer, uh, which will be here, no, no double height uh, refrigeration in this unit. Um, so more counter space, full height cabinetry, and then essentially you have your range wall, your sink wall, that's where Brian's working right now. We'll probably get everything set up for the appliances below the sink. Um, we're gonna have a wall mounted TV here. And then we have this island, and this island's gonna house a washer dryer combo. Uh, we'll get the spec on it. I know it's an LG model, it's a newer one. Uh, and it's important, we're actually gonna have that thing shipped to our shop. So we build the island to make sure it's as flush as, and built in looking as possible. Cause this is tight. Again, small, small space. We don't want two units. So the all in one unit works. Uh, it's not a high capacity, but it's not necessary. Last thing I want to point out, uh, we got our plumbing kind of tucked in this sidewall, a lot going on. Electrical, water, hot water, cold water, and drain and there is no vent for the dryer because it's a condensing dryer so it just goes out that drain but this has to be vented and talked about before i don't know who wrote on it with sharpie but we got to clean that off because that column is going to remain exposed uh they were they had it drawn as wrapping it in plaster and i just said man such a cool architectural detail let's keep that thing exposed we'll scribe our countertop around it maybe we'll paint it black so the, the plumbers actually installed copper so we could paint that uh, and it wouldn't be this PVC pipe. Uh, so it gets painted, it's metal. Uh, it's a little bit more along the, the lines of the industrial look and switch back to copper above so that all gets plastered. How cool does that look? All steel riveted together. I think it will look pretty good. What do you guys think? What color should we paint that? How you doing, Brian? Yeah, good great grand. I think Jim Carrey said that. All right, guys. So if you guys like these site visits, you know what to do. Make sure you let, let us know below. And we'll see you guys next week.